Welcome to the Mid-Major Report. We're going to go a full court press on news, highlights, reactions, and more on the best mid-majors in the South. This week, we are taking a look on our previews. So start the clock and let's get going. We start in the American Athletic Conference where last year, Florida Atlantic made the Final Four, but not in this conference. This year, they're joining the party in the AAC after Houston, UCF, and Cincinnati all punched their tickets to the Big 12. The AAC released their preseason poll and rank FAU number one, Memphis number two, number three Tulane, number four UAB, and number five East Carolina in their conference top five. Uh, Eric Gaines from UAB, Janelle Davis from Florida Atlantic, Elijah Martin from Florida Atlantic, Javon Quinterly from Memphis, and Jalen Forbes from Tulane were all named first team AAC in the preseason. Joe Lenardi has two AAC teams in his first bracket of the year. He's putting FAU as a four seed and Memphis in as a seven. Should be an exciting year between these two as they compete for the American Conference title. Is the A-Sun one of the most exciting conferences in the world of mid-major basketball? You bet your sweet John Stockton rookie card it is. Well, there's several solid teams in the A-Sun this year. One team needs to be looked at a little especially hard and looking at them maybe at the front of the pack at the beginning of the year. Last year, Eastern Kentucky finished third in the conference and they're returning 85% of their players' minutes from last season. Oh yeah, that's a ton. In the age of the transport portal, that is a lot of continuity. Meanwhile, North Alabama and Austin P are both looking to be solid teams this season in the hunt for a conference title. You've heard of the Big East, now let's go even bigger. Let's go to the Big South. Last year, the UNC Asheville Bulldogs took the crown in this conference. This season, Asheville looks like they could repeat his chance. Keep an eye out for Drew Pember on this Bulldogs team. Also looking pretty solid in this conference is Radford, Winthrop, and Longwood. The Lancers may even have a sleeper in this league for the Conference Player of the Year in Michael Christmas. The biggest story last year in the Colonial was Charleston. The Cougars were exceptional and looked to be a Cinderella story in the NCAA tournament. Unfortunately for them, they ran into the national runner-up San Diego State in the first round. Well, according to Resource Nexus, they think Charleston will take a step back this season. Their ADI Jeff model actually likes Towson the, for the best team in the Colonial this season. However, they do say the player to watch in this conference is Bryce Butler from Charleston, a recent transfer from West Liberty. Let's be honest, Conference USA got ripped apart this offseason with several of its teams moving to the American. While FAU, UAB, Rice, and others traded USA for the even more patriotic America, this conference still promises to have a fun showing. While Liberty has kind of been the team to watch the last couple of years here, there appear to be three teams also expected to make some noise in this conference this season. Louisiana Tech looks like an interesting team this season, along with Middle Tennessee State and newcomer New Mexico State. Keep an eye out for Daniel Bacho on this Louisiana Tech team this season. In the MEAC, there was a lot of love for Howard last season, and there's already talk about them winning it all again this year. The API Jeff is rocking with Howard, and the Resource Nexus is calling Seth Towns the player to watch this year in the conference. But who's going to challenge? Well, the Resource Nexus also points out North Carolina Central as a possible contender in the conference. While the Valley may be thought of as more of a Midwestern conference, there are two Southern teams to keep an eye on here in this conference. The favorite looks to be Drake again this season, but our local boys from Murray State and Missouri State don't look to be pushovers in this league. In fact, this conference may turn it up a level and be pretty competitive. In fact, Missouri State looks to be projected to be second in the conference by the ADI Jeff this season. Player to watch, check out Drake's Tucker DeVries. From one valley to the other, let's look at the OVC. I'm telling you now, don't sleep on Little Rock. Two SEC transfers and former Razorbacks joined this team this year. Mikel Mitchell and KK Robinson will be looking to rock the rock this season for the Trojans. Need another player to convince you? How about USF transfer Jameer Chaplin? Grad transfer who shot over 40% from the floor. Should be an interesting team to keep an eye on, but also keep an eye out for Moorhead State and Tennessee Tech this season. What just seems to be the best conference in Southern Mid-Major Basketball, the SoCon is ramping up for another fun season in this Carolina-ish area. Last year, Furman were the rock stars of the conference, punching their ticket to the second round of the NCAA tournament last season. While Furman is going to be one of the tougher teams in this conference, there's plenty of other teams that are going to be tough. Samford, 
UNCG, Chattanooga, and the Citadel are all expected to compete for the conference this year. This league feels wide open, and we'll see how wild it gets this season. Look, I know we're all tired of talking about him, and I know a lot of people are just upset he's coaching again, but Will Wade and McNeese State might be the best team in the Southland this season. Yes, we could see Will Wade in March again. In fact, they are so heavily favored according to the Resource Nexus, they think McNeese State, at least on paper, could compete in stronger leagues this season. Keep an eye out for Wells for McNeese State. God help us. I'm not saying this because I'm an Arkansan. I've actually done my homework and I think it's time to start thinking about the possibility that there are three Arkansas teams that could make the tournament this season. Arkansas State hired Alabama assistant coach Brian Hodgson this offseason and yeah, he's putting together a pretty good squad. Freddie Hicks is projected by the ADI Jeff to even be the best player in the Sun Belt. But this isn't a runaway. Southern Miss, James Madison, App State, and Coastal Carolina should all be pretty good this season. This is going to be a competitive conference. Keep an eye out for Andre Cubello and Terrence Edwards this season as well. And from the SWAC, and the fourth Arkansas team making the tournament this year is UAPB. I'm kidding. Texas Southern, Jackson State, and Grambling State are all expected to be front runners in some circles in the SWAC, but I think Alcorn State has a pretty good fight in them this season as well. Two players to watch here, Deshaun Ruffin at Jackson State and Kenny Hunter at Texas Southern. From the SWAC to the WAC, look, I have no idea where you really base this conference anymore region-wise, but hey, they got a few Texas schools, so we're going to cover it. The Resource Nexus ranks Grand Canyon as the number one mid-major as they define the term. We here define the term differently, but yeah, Grand Canyon is a good team this year and look like they're going to be favorites out in the WAC. But wait, there's plenty of good teams here. Stephen F. Austin, in fact, looks like a competitive team in this league. And if Hall has anything to say about it, the Lumberjacks of Nacogdoches are gonna fight for a conference title. I'd also recommend checking out Texas schools Tarleton State and Abilene Christian this season. Hey, thanks for checking out the Mid-Major Report. We'll be back before the season starts with some of the biggest matchups on opening day soon. Please like and subscribe to the channel or follow Hoop Southbound wherever you get your podcasts. The regular show comes out on Tuesday mornings where we talk about SEC basketball every week. And remember, if we didn't have mid-majors, we wouldn't have March Madness.